Well, we've driven today north for about, well, just over three hours to this little village right very, very close to the northern border of Romania. So we're right up in the north. Then the place has a, a really lovely feel to it. It's quite a, it's like an alpine town, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. A, a real countryside feel for it. And the couple of things we're going to visit, what we're going to do, we've decided, it is quite late in the day, it's half past four, and it's very hot, nearly 35 degrees C, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, but it's hot. Um, so we're going to go to the campsite, get sorted, chill out, have a shower, and then the plan is to get up early in the morning and get down to these couple of sites we want to visit first thing tomorrow morning. So we'll see you guys hopefully bright and early tomorrow morning. We will. Sitting in a big cloud of smoke. Reminds me of the old days. morning oh we're here today at the merry cemetery also known as the cheerful cemetery and very cheerful it is uh, we'll tell you a lot more about it later we didn't actually want to talk about the merry cemetery while we we're there because it is a sacred place, there's a lot of visitors, some of whom may well be visiting the graves of their own relatives, so we thought it was better to talk about it after the event. Yeah, we did. Um, it is a, a massive tourist attraction, I have to say, and that's been for quite, a, I think, a couple of decades or so. Um, but 800 graves there altogether of people from Sapanta, um, the local town, and um, they all carry, they're all painted blue, and they all uh, carry pictures of the dead person and uh, a limerick really and the limerick has been written it's about their life and what, about what they did for a living and about how they met their death. Uh, we've got an accountant who's sitting at his desk in his picture, there are housewives baking cakes, um, we've got farmers in the fields with their scythes uh, but then you go to the gruesome ones or the funny ones um, and we've got things like a beheading somebody's been run over, um, somebody was in front of a firing squad, that sort of thing really. It's known as the Merry Cemetery, also the Cheerful Cemetery and actually you can really see why. Um, they're so colourful and in fact when you go inside the church that too is incredibly colourful. Really there's every square inch of the inside is decorated uh, in really kind of joyous colours isn't it? And I think that a lot of the, the philosophy behind it is that for the people in this area, death is actually a joyous moment yeah. because they're moving on to something better, whatever that may be. Um, so really they're celebrating people's lives and uh, not being miserable about their death in any way. 
I thought one really lovely thing about the church was around the top near the roof um, there were pictures again the pictures off the graves um, had been put onto a tile it looked like I suppose yeah. and put all the way round um, the church that was magnificent mm. so we did actually think the church might have been quite new didn't we fairly maybe or although, maybe rebuilt although I think the first of these graves was right back in the 1930s wasn't yes. it yes um, the uh, the chap who um, the carpenter, the creator, the artist. Um, he was a local um, guy and he started making these when he was 14 years of age, yeah. um, which was quite amazing. And then when, I think in the 1930s, he actually started um, doing it big scale for the cemetery and carried on right the way through to his death. And he then handed over to his apprentice. Mm. Um, he gave him his house, all his tools, and obviously he taught him well, so he carried on. And um, the guy, that, that particular carpenter, I'm going to have to look his name up. Um, that the carpenter um, is actually buried there in the cemetery. Yeah. And he's got his own blue cross picture and little note underneath it which actually his is not is not funny it's it was quite no no it just yeah, quite nice tells nice his his life story. yeah he actually carved his own cross before he died um he died in 1977 didn't he so 1977 yeah so he was ready wasn't he yeah. so what's his name stan Johan patras yeah and he born was he was born in, in sepanta in 1908 mm. so he's, he's quite a character and it costs 10 lei per person to enter but I, that, I guess that they use that for the upkeep, really, of that fantastic church. Yeah, a ten lay is one pound seventy in oh, British yes. money. <laughs> After visiting the cemetery, we cycled another couple of kilometres through the town to a monastery. In this part of Romania, a lot of churches are built in this very old style of they're built entirely of wood from the foundations upwards. And the one at this monastery is actually the highest one in the entire world, and it was built in 1931. site where we'd been to see the uh, Merry Cemetery and the monastery and um, we're driving along the road now to our next place for the night um, and just wanted to point out to you uh, I'm going to turn it round now so you can actually see now I don't know what you can see over there um, right there's a, a, a river just beyond these this bit of green here the first bit of green is a river the other side of the river is Ukraine. So the buildings that we can see in the distance there, well not that distant really, are Ukraine, um, which is quite remarkable um, I think really. So um, see all the hills there, the, all, the, uh, pro all the houses are perched into the hillside um, and lots of forests. I, I, that's obviously a peaceful part of Ukraine, there's been no problems there. But um, yeah, so just our thoughts to Ukraine at the moment. That's how close we are.
The van needed a wash, although it needed another one the next day, so maybe that was a waste of time. From Sir Pinter and the Merry Cemetery, we spent a few days travelling southeast through the Maramuish Mountains. This is a really beautiful area and we stayed at some lovely sites. One of the places we stayed was the Camping Gradina Bukovini, where they could only just squeeze us into their field. It's a working farm and it was great to spend some time there watching the owner turning his hay before stacking it on these traditional haystacks. such a lovely area that we took our bikes out to get a closer look and found this amazing mirrored cube building. Further south in the Hasmas Mountains, as we drove round Lake Hangu and across the impressive Bikaz Dam, we found ourselves driving through the Bikaz Gorge. We had no idea it was even there. What a great treat it was. The souvenir shops and tour buses were a little tedious, but the natural wonder of the gorge was incredible. doing this hike this morning we've just uh, walked straight out the back of the campsite and straight up this trail which basically takes us straight up the mountain um, it's billed as a one direction five and a half miles so we're not going to be doing that we're just going to take it as far as we can and then either turn around or find another way down but it is very very lovely it is very natural woodland. But also quite steep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's getting the old heart pumping anyway. Now we've taken a bit of precaution this morning because there are bears in these forests. 
Now while we are super keen to see some bears, because they are absolutely magnificent, we're also super keen to see one in the right circumstances. And that's not the same as just going around a corner and there's one stood right there. So we've done some reading about what to do, should we come up against one. Um, My circumstances <laughs> would be sitting in the van and that's, it's on the side of the road. Yeah, photographed with a, <laughs> photographed with a long telephoto lens. <laughs> but let's see, I'm sure the, the other thing, when you read the advice, they basically say if you do come across a bear, brackets, which there's virtually no chance whatsoever will happen. <laughs> So, uh, and what are you to do? You to remain calm. Yeah. Not run. They can outrun you. Yeah. They can run apparently at thirty miles an hour. That's right. Remain calm. Uh, talk to it in a calm way. You know, hey bear, that sort of thing. <laughs> and just move away. Move away. So we'll see. But I still hope to see it when in the van. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and possibly if, if one does charge, they say stand your ground, make lots of noise, wave your arms about. You didn't tell me about the charging bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, was a, there was a big if, because it's, yeah, unlikely. Oh, you have to climb over a tree. <laughs> you come, occasionally come against um, little barriers in the path. Not a problem, though. And climb over that. Also, this path is very well marked with the little targets on the trees, as well as being pretty well marked on all trails. The line where we've been and where we are. So, we shouldn't get lost. Famous last words. <laughs> right, you know I said this path's nicely marked. Well, it is. So we're following the, the markers, but unfortunately it goes down here and probably because this is the heat of the summer, um, the path basically disappears into this undergrowth. And so as that is pretty impenetrable up there, we've decided that we're going to turn around and go back down. <laughs> We're just over a mile into this so it means we'll only be doing two miles of this walk but we can always find something else when we get further down. It's a beautiful forest I'm sure we'll find somewhere we can stroll about nicely.
As we arrive at Camping Delta here in Murigol in the Danube Delta, we're going to leave you with some aerial shots from a couple of days ago. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next exciting episode from the Danube Delta. Mm -hmm.